characteristics of an electrical circuit. Now, I'm calling this one, it's electric, woogie, 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 woogie. Um, so we're talking about three main characteristics. The first one I'd like to talk about is this idea of electric potential. Sometimes it's called voltage, and the symbol that we use is a V um, for voltage. Electric potential is a force. Now, I put force in quotes because normally we think of a force as a push or a pull. But unfortunately, Mr. Fay cannot put an electron in his hand and push it. But I can take a balloon and rub it on my shirt and then push electrons from one place to the next. So I put it in quotes. It has the ability to push or pull an electron through a material. Usually that material is a conductor because it allows electrons to move very quickly. So I'm about to tell you a story which is kind of like an analogy, a story that illustrates an idea. So let's imagine that I had a five gallon bucket here and I filled it with four and a half gallons of water. If I were to poke a hole in this bucket, what would happen? If I were to poke a hole right here, what would happen to the water? Would the water come out of the bucket? Yeah, it would. And would it shoot in a really big stream? Actually, it wouldn't. It would kind of dribble up because there's not that much water above it. In other words, there's not a lot of water pushing the water through the hole. But if I put a hole right here, what would happen to the water? The water would come out of the bucket, but it would shoot with a really big stream. In other words, there's a lot of electric or water potential if I put a hole in the bucket down there versus there. So if there's a big potential, I call it a large voltage. Now, in this analogy, uh, water represents the electrons in a circuit. When you buy a battery, in essence, you're buying the ability to push electrons. The second characteristic that we will talk about is current. Current is measured in amperes, or sometimes that's abbreviated as amps, or sometimes that's abbreviated as A. Now, uh, the symbol, it's symbolized with a capital I. And most students go, Mr. Fay, that makes no sense to me. Why don't they just call it a capital C? Well, actually, capital C means something to us. It means coulombs. So, in order to keep it all straight, uh, scientists have designated current to be I. And current is the number of electrons, which is usually measured in coulombs, that pass a particular point in any given amount of time, and that's usually measured in one second. In fact, by definition, one amp is one coulomb's worth of charge, which, remember, an electron has an incredibly small charge. You have to get billions and billions and billions of electrons together to equal one coulomb. So that's a lot of electrons in one second whizzing past one particular point. Have you ever heard of current before? I mean, outside of the realm of physics. Yeah, the current in a stream or a river. If you stand there and you watch how much water goes by, it's a pretty good analogy to the current that we're talking about. About. But instead of water, we talk about electrons. Here we go. Here we go again. So let's say that I have two buckets. One's a five-gallon bucket, and I haven't punched a hole in it yet. And uh, this bucket has a lot of water, and another five-gallon bucket with just a little bit of water. What happens when I poke a hole here? Water starts to move. In other words, it goes from here into here, right? And if I were to stand in one particular place, I could watch how much water goes by very, very quickly. And that place is right here. I can measure current. Right there. So uh, what happens? So one bucket has a lot of water. One bucket has a little bit of water. When I poke a hole in it, the water level in this bucket starts to drop. What happens to the water level in this bucket? It starts to rise. Keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Does the water do this? You know what? It won't do that. The level will st stop when they become equal. And if I allow this to occur over and over and over again, eventually I'm going to get a bucket, two buckets that are full to the same height. There is no potential difference. Does water flow? If there's no potential difference, there is no 
current. And actually, you do this with your electronics. When your batteries, when you put them in fresh, they have a lot of high potential, low potential. The difference in potential is very different. And the battery continues to supply electrons until what happens? That the positive side of the battery is very, very similar to the negative side of the battery, and the battery doesn't have any oomph to push electrons through your uh, Game Boy or whatever. And you get no current, and you, call, you say that the batteries have died. What do you do? You take those batteries out, you put brand new batteries in with a high electrical potential, and it starts to push electrons again. The final characteristic that I'm going to talk about is resistance. Resistance is measured in ohms, or this funny looking upside down horseshoe. And its symbol is R, which seems to make sense. That's resistance. Resistance is the ability of a material or the shape of that material to allow electrons to pass through it. So here's my analogy again. OK, I got my five gallon bucket, a, a tube running between my two five gallon buckets. And I poked a hole in this one, but I haven't poked a hole in that one yet. Right next to it, I put my five gallon bucket with a really big tube, but I haven't poked a hole yet. So. Which one, when I poke holes, which one is going to have a higher resistance, or in other words, prevents water from moving through it? So if I poke a hole in this one, what does water do? It travels from one place to the next, right? But in this one, I have a high resistance. And in other words, the pipe is really, really small, and it's hard to push water through there. Does water move very quickly? No, so I have a low current. If I have a high resistance, I have a low current. But let's move over to this one. If I poke a hole this large, what can I say about the amount of water? A lot of water is going to be able to flow through there, or a lot of electrons are going to be able to flow through there. So this one has low resistance and high current. Now, let's take this idea and move it into the electrical world the wire that's going into your house, do you think it's going to be really, really, really thin? So in other words, it's hard to push many electrons into it? Probably not. Your house consumes a lot of electrons, has a lot of electricity. So they use really big cables to run into your house. But inside of your electronics, it might not be important to get a lot of electronics from one place to the next, and they can use really, really thin wires. So those are the three characteristics of electrical circuits, and it's kind of uh, governed by one particular law. We call it Ohm's law. Same guy, resistance, Ohm's law. And that is the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. Voltage equals current times resistance. And actually, we'll do math with that later.